Welcome back to Tuneful Tuesdays, and we have another debut. Last week it was the debut of Masterworks. Check out the link above. That was a Harry Nielsen album I was looking at for that one. And this week we have another one. This is the debut of the Musical Ramblings. Now, Musical Ramblings, well, there's a risk of rambling. Let's get that out of the way. To begin with, it's not particularly snappy or targeted or fast moving or anything like that, really. It's full of tangents and it's full of rambling, basically. It's not going to go on for long, just a 10 minute, and it'll include lots of music ideas and music thoughts. Some of them might not make much sense. And some of them might wander off down weird little cul-de-sacs. And if you like the videos themselves and you have your own thoughts or you'd like to add your own ideas and comments, then please, let's carry on the conversation down below. We'll also be talking about formats, about vinyl and CDs and tapes and stuff like that. So it'll wander off into lots of different little pokey areas. I'd like to start with Elvis Presley because a lot of music has started with Elvis Presley. Now, I'm not really here to give you a biography of Elvis Presley or look at each individual record, but I'm here, I'm sort of here to talk about the cultural impact of the man. Now to wander towards my point, I'd like to talk about the internet. There's a lot of bad press thrown at the internet. Lest we forget, there remains some wonderful websites out there. Lots of informative social media pages and highly educational YouTube channels. I was drawn to just one of those websites recently. I was having a bit of a browse. And it was part of a it was sort of vintage collection by an intriguing chap named Eric Robble. I think it's a silent W, Robble. I'll put his name down below. His site is actually packed with lots of varied, mostly non-music vintage items. And they include things like an early model calculator. There's a laptop or two. There's a picture of an early vintage chicken pie box from bird's eye oh yeah and there's a small reel-to-reel -reel tape player by a brand called many which is new to me oh, i was having an afternoon of nostalgia at that particular moment but what stood out for me amongst these various watches and toys and cameras was a leaflet this leaflet was devoted to but not lionizing elvis presley it was, and still is, called The Evils of Elvis Presleyism, and it was written by a certain Dr. David Otis Fuller. Now, Eric Robble was given this actual leaflet as a young man. Now, Eric, back in the 60s, made a mistake. He expressed a wish to own a guitar. Of course, this was the embodiment, in the eyes of many parents of the time, of evil itself. So, having heard that he wanted a guitar, he was given, super fast, this leaflet, hoping, obviously, to cure him of his spiritual ills. Now, the reason I found this tract interesting is not only because of the rather obvious alarmist headline, aimed at a man who would ultimately star in such cinematic schlock as Kissing Cousins and Viva Las Vegas, although I did quite like Viva Las Vegas. But it wasn't really that, it was something else. You see, at that time, our Dr. David Otis Fuller, the 
author of this leaflet, was a prolific scribbler of religious tracts and other issues of import. He offered his religious and related social views across all media. Fuller actually served in the Navy as a chaplain during World War II. He founded Cornerstone University Grand Rapids. He was the editor for General Association of Regular Baptists, and he was the founder and president of the Witch Bible Society. Apparently, this gentleman read the Bible in toto 75 times, so he says, before he died in 1988. Now, he was a much respected and honoured man and was invited to talk at a range of institutions. In fact, you can see an archive record of the man's work here. Here's a picture of the website, and I'll put a link below if you would like to know more. Fuller's files are listed in both sermons and boxes. In box seven, there are writings devoted to one Elvis Presley. Now Fuller, well, he didn't like Elvis Presley. And that's pretty obvious by this tract's title. Now what gets me about this cover is that the invective was aimed at Elvis. Now this tract was published at least in 1957. That's the date attributed to Fuller's archival writings on Elvis at any rate. Now by that time, Bill Haley and his Comets had released the single Rock Around the Clock. Carl Perkins had issued Blue Suede Shoes. Chuck Berry's Maybelline was already on the shelves. Little Richard had already released Tutti Frutti. And there was more, much more. In 1957, rock and roll was a mature and thriving musical genre. In fact, the United States was in the midst of a musical revolution at the hands of a host of creative talents, both black and white. And yet, and yet, here was a highly educated, well-connected, well-informed man, our Mr. Fuller, who saw, well, he saw none of that. As many other people in the USA of that time, they also saw none of that. What Fuller saw, and what many frightened families saw, was Elvis Presley. Now, what gets me about this religious tract is not that it targets the evils of rock and roll, or even in the modus operandi of the time, the evils of race music. Oh no, Fuller focuses only on something he calls Elvis Presleyism. Elvis represents the entire movement. Elvis is the movement. He is the darkness. He's a man who has the power to corrupt, according to Fuller. Elvis has the power to corrupt all on his own. Remarkably here, Elvis actually becomes an ism. Now, I find that striking and a sort of testament to Elvis's social importance in this already established musical genre. His dominant image in the society of the country as a whole, if Fuller is any kind of yardstick, and the very threat he appeared to be in 1957 to all God-fearing people of the time, especially the children of those God-fearing parents. Now, of course, I had already heard of the moral panic Elvis imbued via his rotating hips, but it was fascinating to see the material evidence of the same. Now, in the actual tract itself, Fuller describes Elvis as uneducated. He calls his sideburns, his sideburns, grotesque, and his guitar playing he calls crude. Possibly most significantly, the text notes Elvis as a sex idol. And 
I don't know, maybe we'll get into the crux of all of this. A facet of Elvis that might be revealed to be the core of the entire problem. Fuller's problem. Middle America's problem. Now, it may be hard for some of us to fully appreciate, and yes, I'm extrapolating like crazy here, but viewing Fuller's position in the society of the time and his position as a spokesman for the crew cut, respectable, middle-of-the-road, consumer-friendly, super-patriotic, mama's apple pie conservative majority, and if other anecdotes and stories about Elvis are also taken into consideration, Elvis Presley, back in 1957, was a terrible force to be reckoned with, one that shook the very core of an entire country. Things would, of course, change later on. But at that moment, at that specific time, more than even the music itself, he was the danger. He was the bogeyman. The boogeyman? He was the monster under your bed. He was, in fact, the revolution. So, yeah, go Elvis. that's it folks thank you very much for joining me on my first musical ramblings now they're not all going to be like this and we're going to wander off into weird and wonderful corners and i hope you'll join me for that journey now before i go if i could trouble you for the odd little like and subscribe underneath it's very much appreciated helps this channel just to move swiftly and smoothly through the youtube algorithm i look forward to your company at the end of the week when i have another video and more at hi-fi until then folks bye bye for now